things to make are simple projects that make a big impact that don't take you very long but really add something special to a celebration. Today I'm going to show you a few techniques in Lightburn and Illustrator to create simple, we're going to call them pie toppers today, but you could also use this technique to make cake toppers, to make place cards. This is a really simple technique and the assembly of these is very, very simple. This is a great project to do if you're just getting started with Lightburn and you really want something that can show you how to use different skills within Lightburn to achieve a specific goal. I also today will show you a couple of things that I've been testing out with acrylic. Who doesn't love a good hack, right? If this sounds interesting to you, stick around and we'll get started. First, we're gonna go ahead and design this in Illustrator. You can do this in Illustrator or any solution of your choosing. I'm gonna show you today in Illustrator and Lightburn. This isn't as easy to do in the Glowforge Premium software due to the restrictions that you have on fonts, but you can do this there as well. So if you want to see how to do that, please let me know in the comments. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and make our circle. So we're gonna choose our ellipse tool and we will hold shift while we make a circle because that will make a perfect circle. Then we will choose the transform to get it the size that we want. I've decided that I want this pie topper to be about four inches. Knowing that a pie is typically about nine inches round and about an inch and a half deep, we're going to make this four inches. I have the lock here locked, so I will choose four and it will automatically resize that. Now I want to make sure that this is a filled shape so that I can see what I'm doing when I go to cut out my words. So I have a filled shape, there's my circle. Next, I will create my text. So I'm gonna choose my text tool. I'm going to make a box. I know that I want this to be a different font, so I'm gonna delete the text that it populated. I'm gonna choose this Avellino font, which I've left a link to in the description. I really like this font for a couple of reasons. Um, just like the way it looks, but it also has a lot of good characters that I don't always have. My niece's name has an accent in it and not all fonts have that. And so I generally have to figure out how to make that work if I can't get that. So I like this font for that reason. So we'll type out our words. We're going to start with give and we are going to do these in two separate words so that I can align them the way that I want. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double click this dark dot here that will resize my box to be the size of my word. Then I am going to change the color of my word to white. Now I can know that I don't see it here, but I still see my box. So I will drag it onto my circle. Then I will copy it, uh, command C, command V on a Mac. And I will change this to say thanks. Then I will space these how I want. I'm going to go ahead and align them center using the align menu. I'm going to align them to the centers and then I will resize them together. So holding the shift key, I will drag that corner. And that looks about right to me. So I will go ahead and center these onto the circle as well. Now I am centered and I like the way that that looks horizontally. So I'm not going to change anything there. What I like about doing this method versus using an offset is that I can just actually give this a stroke. Right now, these letters don't have a stroke, so I can add a stroke to these letters, a white stroke, and I can make it just one or two points to see how much more weight that will give me in these letters. I like one point. I think that that's about right. Let's see if I can get 1.5. Nope. So I like that one point additional weight. It's just slightly thicker than it was, but I think that will look better when it's cut out. So I'm gonna do that to the bottom as well. Now that I've done that, I need to create outlines for these so that I can cut them out of this circle. So instead of them being text at this point, they will both be paths. So you to do that, you right click on that object and choose create outlines. All right, now that I have those created, I'm going to grab both of those. I'm going to group them using command G to group them. I'm going to also grab my circle. I'm going to go to my Pathfinder menu and I'm going to choose minus front and that will remove 
those letters. So now you can see that's all one path and my letters are removed. I like the way that this looks as the start. You could use this as just a little table marker or a plate marker. You can resize it from here, but I wanna go ahead and make this a little pie topper. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a rectangle. I'm just gonna make a quick rectangle and I will transform it to be the size that I want it to be. So I know that I want it to be about a half an inch. I'm gonna unlock so that I can change the dimensions independently. I'm gonna make it a half an inch wide and an inch tall. Then I'm going to choose that with my selection arrow. I'm going to bump it up against my circle and then I'm gonna center them. And then I'm gonna go ahead and unite those paths using the Pathfinder menu. All right, now I want a little point on this so that I can just dig it into my pie really easily. And so I don't have those blunt edges. So I'm gonna create a triangle. I'm gonna use the polygon tool. And I'm just gonna click on the, on the canvas. I'm gonna choose three sides. And there is my triangle. I'm gonna rotate my triangle using the transform menu. I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees. Then I'm going to bring it over to my shape. I know that I want it to be 0.5 inches wide. I like the length of it, so I'm gonna keep that unlocked. Then I'm going to attack, I'm gonna center align those as well. And then this is still a little this is a little tall. So I don't want it to be that tall. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I want to not have that harsh point there. Make sure those are aligned. Zoom in a little bit so I can see if those are aligned. I'm actually going to change this to the opposite. Switch the fill in the stroke so that I can make sure that those are lined up appropriately. Okay, those are just overlapping. Great. Now, if you see this little circle here, the circle that looks like a bullseye, so I need to make sure that I have the single selection tool and I get that and then it will just round that corner. So I want this a little bit more blunted off. That looks good to me. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and do that same Pathfinder Unite here. Here's my Pathfinder Unite. Now I have this kind of ugly corner here, so we're gonna fix that. All right, that looks pretty good. If you want to see what that's going to look like when it cuts, you can do View Outline and then you'll see what that looks like and where those points are. I could probably choose to simplify this and see if it would actually get rid of those couple of points right there. And it looks like it did. So that simplified that a little bit and you can see what that looks like, how that will cut. That's the cut path. So now we can view using our preview and that's what our little pie topper will look like. So if we wanted to make those letters a little bit thicker, we could. Uh, this font, that might be a little bit challenging with this E. You might not be able to get that same look. So you could choose a different font if you wanted to. But at this point, this is ready to export as an, F as an SVG or to just copy and paste directly into Lightburn if you're using that. If you're going to export it as an, F <laughs> as an SVG, you'll choose File and you will save it as. You don't actually want to choose export. You want to choose save as. We want to use our artboards uh, to maintain our size ratio. This size artboard is set up for my Thunder Laser, but you could set it up for your Glowforge. You would want to set that up at about 19 by 11.9 to get your cutting surface. And then when you choose save, this will give you properties. So you want to choose SVG 1.0 and you want to have three decimal places and you want to make sure that this is not responsive. So you make sure this is not checked and then you are ready to go. Next we'll design in Lightburn. I've been spending more time playing around in Lightburn and as I'm learning some of the capabilities, there are some things that make designing in it really, really simple. A lot of things are very simple, but there are a few things that actually might be a little bit easier because of, of the nature of Lightburn and who it's geared for. So now let's create our design in Lightburn. So the first thing that we're going to do very similarly, we will choose our ellipse tool. We will choose the shift key and we will drag to create a circle. 
created a perfect 100 millimeter circle. I did not intend to do that. I know that I want this to be about four inches in light burn. If you're working in millimeters, you can always type into the box for IN and it will convert that to millimeters for you. Because I have the lock closed, it will maintain the proportions. I'm ready to add my text. So I'm gonna go choose my font, the Avellino font at a 20 height, and I'm just gonna start typing. So we're gonna choose the word grateful. And in light burn, when it moves over the item, you'll actually be able to see it, even though it's black. So you can then not have to change the color there. I'm gonna zoom in so that I can see this. Then I'm gonna move my board using the space bar and my mouse. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Now this looks good from a size on our circle. I'm gonna go ahead and align those two things. I'm gonna use my alignment tool and align them center and center. So I don't love the way that looks centered on the horizontal, so I'm actually gonna move it back up on the circle to where I like it from where it's pleasing to my eye, not necessarily where it's officially centered based on this font. Okay, and I wanna make this font just a little bit thicker. So in this case, instead of adding a stroke weight, I am going to offset this shape. And I'm going to use the direction of both because I want to go it to go inside of this R and this A as well as to the outside. You can see if I choose outward that it won't do those inside shapes. So I wanna do that. And I can choose in this case whether I want to offset the outer shapes only. Typically when you're using an offset in Lightburn, that's what you're gonna to wanna to do. In this case, I can do either. If I want to make these insides of these R's and these A's a little bit thicker, I can turn that off. And then it will also offset that shape that's inside, but we'll just leave it on so I don't forget the next time. And it doesn't make a huge difference in this case. You can choose to also delete the original objects if all you really want is that outline. Um, I'm gonna do that in this case because I don't want any remnants of the, of the original. So I'm gonna choose to delete that and I'm gonna choose to simplify my results. So now I'm click okay. And now this looks funny, right? It doesn't look like it's right. But what happens is you pick up we're gonna move our circle. <laughs> We're gonna pick up the piece that we want and you'll see the leftovers are underneath and we'll delete those. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab this object again. I'm going to center it, just move my circle. Okay, now I wanna select both of those. And if I drag from the bottom right and up and I have a green box, that will grab anything that's touched. If I grab from the top and pull down, top left and pull down, I have a red box, I have to grab everything. So in this case, nothing selected. In this case, only my word selected, and in this case, I selected both. So I'm gonna grab everything, and I'm gonna choose this Boolean operation, Boolean subtract, which will take out the letters. Now you can see that that is just one piece. So the next thing that we need to do is create that little stake to hold this into our pie. Then we're gonna do the similar thing. We, we are going to create a rectangle and then we'll resize this. Again, this we don't want to have reshape both at the same time because I don't know that I want the width to be that. So I'm gonna choose 0.5 inches and I'm gonna choose for it to be one inch long. I'm going to drag that up to my circle choose both, and I'm gonna use the weld option to make those into one shape. Now I'm gonna create a triangle. So to create a triangle, you choose the polygon tool. You can start to draw your polygon. Again, shift will give you a perfect polygon. And then you need to go in the shape priority. So typically you will have your cuts layers option open over here. You'll go into the shape properties and you can change the number of sides. To have that triangle ready to go, I am going to select it and I am going to rotate it 180 degrees. Now we know it's too wide, so I'm gonna change its width here again to that 0.5 inches. With my two objects, I'm gonna align them center. 
Now, I want to change this corner to be rounded, similar to what we did in Illustrator. And the way to do that in Lightbird is to use this radius tool. So we're going to choose the radius tool. I know that I need a small radius. I'm going to select my triangle first, then I'm going to collect this radius tool. And then when I see this corner, this little bullseye, crosshairs, crosshairs, pull up, then that's the corner that will be rounded. So I'm going to choose that. And now I have my rounded corner. If I wanted to change that radius a little bit, I could. But I like the way that too looks. I'm going to go back to my arrow key. I'm going to select both of my objects and I am going to merge them. Now, similar to what we had in Illustrator, I have a funny little corner here so I can go and edit those nodes. The first thing that we need to do is we need to ungroup it to be able to edit the nodes. So we're going to ungroup and now we can select this and we can select the node edit tool right here. And you can see our little nodes. We're going to zoom in even more and we are going to manipulate those nodes and we're just going to actually make them one. So we have one we really don't need. And you can see all the shortcuts here if you highlight over here. So we just hit D and it will delete that one node we don't need. Similarly here. Again, these are just nodes we don't need. I just wanted to make sure that I could see what was cleaned up. Now we have one corner and we just have one corner. So now that is all cleaned up. And you can see the other nodes. So this is a pretty simple shape at this point with those simple nodes. So now that we're done, I want to go ahead and regroup this because I want to make sure that I don't miss anything when we go to cut. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to choose Command G to group that whole thing. And that is now ready to go to our laser. Now I'm ready to send this to the laser. I want to make sure that I am mindful of these little pieces here that I need to catch them because this is going to be the top with a backer against it. I know my settings. So for acrylic, I typically have been using 15 speed and 60 power. It depends on the acrylic, but this seems to be getting me good results. I do want to play around with this a little bit more because I think there may be some better options as well. So that is ready to go. I'm going to go ahead. I don't want the origin to be right there. I want the origin to be the top left corner because I'm going to place my laser at the top left of my material. And then I am going to go ahead and send this to the laser. Because this is acrylic, I want to make sure that I show air off because I want low air. I want just enough air to catch the flames, but not enough air that it's going to blast and make the um, cut a little bit not as smooth. We'll give it a name and send it to the laser and we are off and running. Acrylic can be intimidating for some people, and I absolutely love acrylic. It is probably my favorite to work with. I like to be able to get my projects done quickly, and there are so many beautiful acrylics out there. I just want to collect them all. But acrylic can be a little bit tricky to work with in getting smooth edges, good clean cuts. It isn't always consistent because of the way that it's made, so its thickness isn't always consistent all the way through. But with playing around with some of these tricks, you might be able to find something that works really well for you. There's a lot of different options out there of ways to make acrylic work the best for you. One thing that I really love about doing acrylic in my Thunder Laser is that I don't mask, which I really enjoy. Because what I found is that the flames that I get from paper masking just aren't worth it, and I can just remove my masking and work with it as is. The technique that I'm trying now is actually placing the acrylic directly on the knife blades rather than placing it on the honeycomb tray so that I'm not getting that flashback from the laser hitting the honeycomb tray. This worked really well in this case. The other things that you need to think about in acrylic are really your speed and your power. Acrylic, you really want to kind of go slowly to get those nice smooth edges. And this is something you will definitely have to play with. I'll let you know the settings that I'm using for my laser and for the acrylic that I have. But this is one you might want to just take a sacrifice piece of acrylic material and just cut circles, adjusting those things slightly until you get the kind of surface that you want. You might be the only one that notices the difference, but once you get a really smooth edge, you're going to be really happy with those results. The first thing that you want to do before you actually start cutting is you want to make sure that you have your six millimeter head installed. 
bear with me, I am doing this with one hand. So I removed that two millimeter opening and I am going to attach the six millimeter opening. Make sure that you get that on nice and tight before you reinstall it into your laser. Next, if you plan to use it, you'll want to make sure that you apply your 3M tape to your acrylic before you put it into the laser. In something like this, I really like to use the 3M tape because I don't have to worry about little glue spots or making a mess, or especially with those tiny, tiny pieces that we'll have from the inside of our letters. I know that I can get good adhesion with this 3M instead of having to worry about getting glue on those little things. To get that 3M really on correctly, you wanna make sure you go very slow, you'll cut the piece that you need, and then you want to secure it with something like a brayer or a scraper. I'll use the plastic scraper here and really push to get those bubbles out. After you've placed your acrylic in your laser, you'll want to set your focus distance to six millimeters if that's what you are typically using. That is what is recommended with this lens and works well for acrylic. So I'll use my wedge to check my distance. Next, I'm gonna go find my file on my controller. Then I want to go into that file and I want to check the framing of this because I wanna make sure that it is actually cutting out where I want it to. I'm close to an edge, so I wanna make sure that I am not gonna go over that edge. Okay, that looks good. We are ready to cut. You will notice some flames on this glitter acrylic, and I really think that's due to the glitter. I'm gonna play around with it some more to test some different settings and see if I still get the flames, but they're quickly extinguished with the little bit of air that is actually blowing on the low air setting. So I'm not too concerned about it. The next thing that I'll need to do is I need to create a backer shape. So since I already have this ready to go and the backer shape just needs to not have the words, all I need to do is ungroup and then I can select those words and delete them. And now my backer shape is ready to go. I am sending this to a less thick material. So I'm going to change the power and the speed here. I'm going to go a little bit faster with a slightly less power because I don't need as much to cut through this. And we're ready to go. All right, both pieces have come off the laser and now it's time to assemble them. I wanna show you how easy this is when you're using that 3M backing. So really just getting that one edge off uh, very slowly and carefully, but then easy to just pull the rest off. And the 3M material is on the back of that front portion of my topper. So I wanna be really careful when I align these because I'm not gonna have a lot of options to move it. So I go really slowly to make sure that this is all lined up before I secure it. Now that that's secure, and I'm checking to make sure I feel great about the positioning, I'm gonna go ahead and set that down and place my little insides of my letters. Now I started to do these just by hand, but quickly realized that I needed a little bit more accuracy. So I grabbed my tweezers to make that a little bit cleaner. So just placing that A position, Again, you don't have a lot of time to work, so you wanna to try to get it down in the right position as soon as you can, and then really press and make sure that that's where you want it. Similar process to get the inside of the R. That piece I almost lost, but I have it and it's tiny, and I got it in there with my tweezers. Again, just placing that down, and it is secure with that 3M tape. Now, if you plan far enough ahead, you can save all of these pieces and you could use them for something else. 
So you have all of those cutout letters that you could use for an opposite tag um, because they already, again, have that 3M tape on them, they would be really useful. And here are my two finished toppers. Which is your favorite? I really love these glitter acrylics and think that these turned out really cute. I'd love to know how you're gonna use this technique to make your own designs. You could use this with so many different things, so I'm curious what you might make. And I'd absolutely love to see your project. So if you wanna tag me at Things Katie Makes on Instagram, I'd love to see what you do with this. If designing these seemed really simple and it made you think that you want to learn more about designing your own SVG files and your own cut files for your laser, I put some information in the description below about Jacqueline Kyle's course on designing for Illustrator, which was the first one that I took that really walked me through all of the details of making a project start to finish. It's great for right now because her first projects are ornaments. So if that's something that you're interested in, check that out below. And I'll also link to the video where we talked about her business.